top story today is that real-time ray tracing is coming to virtual reality. This means that we will have cinematic quality graphics in virtual reality. It's expected that Oculus, Valve, and Microsoft will announce new VR headsets or XR headsets this year that support real-time ray tracing. That we, NVIDIA's new line of graphics cards, the 2170, the 2080, and the 2080 Ti all support real-time ray tracing. A single graphics card can do it. So this is going to revolutionize movies, as we found out at um, Seagraph last week, SVGN was there. And as we found out today, this is going to revolutionize games. All these major game studios are now supporting um, the real-time ray tracing in the next versions of their games. You're going to be able to buy these cards in September. You can pre-order them now. The, uh, GTI, the, the GTX 1070 starts with 6 gig arrays for $499. Uh, the uh, GTX 2080 uh, starts at $799, and that has 8 gig arrays. And the, the GTX 2080 Ti does 10 gig arrays. Uh, for one thousand one hundred ninety nine bucks the um the really amazing uh, uh, immediate benefit of real time ray tracing we 're going to observe something that we 've never really been able to do before uh, so we at dice have worked closely with Nvidia engineers over the past year to get to the point where we are now and we 're so pr we're proud and thrilled to be here and show it off to all of you so Jonas i 'll leave it to you. take it away yeah. So, what you're seeing there is a tank <laughs> firing off screen, being reflected in the character's eye. Now, you guys know this is not possible no. with, with screen space reflection, right, Jonas? Exactly. This is because the fire is not on the screen. So now, if we turn around and we then see the environment, we can see that the tank muscle flash not only reflects in the eye, it reflects in the entire environment in the tram windows there and within the tank itself, moving here. So now if we keep moving forward, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So of course, one of the big challenges of SSR is also complex surfaces like this. So now with RTX on, if we set off an explosion behind the tank here, but next to the car. Oh, we'll come on. Reflecting accurately within the car. That's impossible. Of course. How would, you, how would you do that with RTX off? Yeah, how does that look? Like this here. So let's, yeah. Wow, that looks on. incredible. <laughs> and it's, of course, it's updating dynamically everything. Reflections will never be the same again. Completely look not. at the reflections off the ground, guys. It just, it just. Yeah, so you can see. Wow, it just happens. With, with SSR, if it's in the screen space, you still get some of the reflections upon the car, but due to the nature of SSR, it disappears as it goes away. But because ray tracing just works, you just get the expected result, how you'd think you'd see it. So the next thing we have to show you is the big, scary crocodile tank, the Churchill. And if we make that one shoot, it's flamethrower across the scene here. Then we will again see that reflecting upon the surface and on the soldiers battling it out here in Rotterdam. So now if we look down in the ground with RTX on, we'll see the flame, we'll see the soldiers moving, we'll see everything. And now if I turn RTX off, we lose everything. We lose all the detail, all the context of what's happening in the scene. But with RTX on, you just get a much more cohesive image and a better understanding of what's happening around you. The reflections are realistic, they're physics based. The shadow is realistic and physics based. It's not just, you're not just improving how good everything looks, you're improving the actual physics of light that you're seeing. So it, it's like, wow, that looks the way it should look and that's giving me more clues to help me understand the environment that I'm in. Uh, I'm able to, you know, if something happens, I'm able to see its reflection and know maybe which direction I should turn. So it starts to feel more like I'm actually there this is going to revolutionize the experience of being VR with better graphics, but also more immersive visuals that um, provide more, they, 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 make, they feel more like the real world. And, uh, and maybe that's going to lead to a revolution in the VR industry. Well, for the very first time because of this, because we could take a lower resolution image, and because we could train a neural network 
with all kinds of super high resolution and super high quality images, this neural network, if runs on a bad out of hell processor called a tensor core, could then in real time enhance images. In real time, generate pixels it had never seen before. Generate pixels that make sense to go there because if you, were to, you and I were to look at it, we would know what makes sense to go there, and therefore, it makes sense that we could teach a neural network how to make sense of what pixels to put there. So as you can see with that video, uh, the uh, first starting off with the, the Battlefield 5 demo, uh, the graphics are just amazing. I mean, like, wow. Uh, I can't believe it. And, um, and it, that, that reflects a six of speed up in the... Uh, in the, the real-time ray tracing power that you get with this latest generation, six times over the Voltus series. Your GTX uh, 1080, I have a 1080, or 1080 Ti, that's, a, that's the, um, uh, what's it called, the Pascal card. So basically, this new 20 series, the GTX 2070, 2080, etc., that is skipping over the Volta. So we're leaping from Pascal over Volta to Turing. It's like the CEO of NVIDIA, uh, Jensen. It's like he reached for it into the future 15 years from now. And got the real the, the ray tracing power from 15 years in the future and brought it back to today. Read the full article at svgn.io news dedicated to Brian.